Starflight was surrounded by scrolls. Stacks of scrolls, walls of scrolls, as high as ten dragons. Scrolls as far as he could see in every direction. His intense joy, so much to read. Surely everything he could wish for had to be in here. All the answers to all his questions. Warred with deep, paralyzing anxiety. How would he ever learn all this? How could he possibly get through it all before the test? What was the test? Something about Wings of Fire. There had to be a scroll on Wings of Fire in here. Oops, said a voice from the next aisle as a pile of scrolls went tumbling, scattering all around Starflight's talons. Clay's face poked out of the wreckage and he grinned at Starflight. Oh hey, there you are. Clay, be careful, Starflight said. He started picking up scrolls and restacking them as neatly as he could. We need all this. Do we? Clay wrinkled a snout. Does the prophecy say, a bunch of scrolls are coming to save the day? <laughs> Funny, I don't remember that part. Starflight gave him a look and picked up the next scroll. How to free the Rainwing prisoners. See, he said, waving it at Clay. All the answers we need. He unrolled it eagerly, only to find it completely blank. Smooth, empty parchment stared back at him, indifferent to his disappointment. Come on outside, Clay said. We could use your help. I can't. I have to read all of these first. Starflight started to spread his wings, knocked over another stack of scrolls, and turned in an agitated circle. Had the wall of scrolls gotten taller? He picked up another scroll. Secrets of the Nightwing. That's what I need, he muttered, rolling it open. But that was blank too. Clay was still waiting. I can't help you until I know everything, Starflight told him. I should stay in here, it won't take long. Soon I'll know a lot more than I do now, but I can't go out there yet. He pulled a shimmering golden scroll out of a pile. Surely something so beautiful had to have something useful in it. How to tell Sunny that you love her. Starflight sighed. He knew before he unrolled it. Blank, blank, blank. Starflight, Clay said. Come on. Hurry, Starflight. He's going somewhere. Come on. It wasn't Clay's voice anymore, and someone was shaking his shoulder, and Starflight blinked awake, muddled and still sleepy. Come on, Fate Speaker whispered again. Flame just snuck out. Let's follow him, quick. Why? Starflight mumbled, rubbing his eyes. You are know where the queen is. But Fate Speaker was already hurrying to the doorway. He stretched, knowing he definitely had not gotten enough sleep, and followed her. Flame's red tail was just disappearing around the corner at the far end of the hallway. Fate Speaker and Starflight scurried quietly after him. She didn't speak, so he kept silent as well. His dream had left him feeling disturbed, like he had forgotten something really important. Someone he had to warn. Soon, Flame found a long staircase that wound down and down and down through the fortress, each level darker than the last, despite the coals glowering in the walls. He stopped a few times, listening, and Fate Speaker and Starflight stopped too, ducking their heads and letting the shadows envelop their black scales. Finally, they reached the bottom of the staircase, and Flame chose one of the tunnels, which seemed to lead directly into the rock of the volcano. Heat pulsed beneath their claws. Starflight paused to touch the walls, worried that he was feeling rumbles of movement from deep within the earth. And then they came to the first cage. It was empty, but Starflight could guess what the bars and the shackles were for. This was the Nightwing dungeon, where Flame and Okre had been imprisoned overnight. Most of the cages were empty, but in the fourth one was a skeletal, drab, grazed Rainwing, fast asleep. Fate Speaker and Starflight paused outside her cage looking in. Starflight wondered why this Rainwing was kept separate from the others in the caves outside. What are you doing here? Flame's accusing face appeared from the shadows making Starflight jump. Following you, Fate Speaker said breezily. What in the three moons are you up to? None of your business, Flame snapped. Go away. What if a god catches you down here? Starflight pointed out. You'd be in much more trouble as a Skywing alone prowling the fortress than if you were with two Nightwings. The Red Dragonette considered that for a moment, smoke rising from his nostrils. 
Fine, he said ungraciously. Do whatever you want, I don't care. He turned and stomped away. Fatespeaker and Starflight exchanged a glance, then followed him. The last cage in the hallway contained a Nightwing. This was where Flame stopped and rapped on the bars with one claw. Not just any Nightwing. Deathbringer. The assassin lifted his head and regarded them. His wings rose and fell as he breathed, and the cage seemed too small for him. Hello, Skywing. Glad to see you on the outside of the cages this time. What does it take to become an assassin? Flame blurted. I want to know the best way to kill another dragon fast! Deathbringer stood up and took a step toward the bars. You mean, the best way to kill another dragon and not care, he said. Flame hissed and lashed his tail. You have to be doing it for a really good reason, said Deathbringer. And you have to believe in that reason completely. You also should avoid talking to your targets in case you find out that they're beautiful, sarcastic, and fascinating. For instance. Is that what happened to you? Flame asked with a snort. Is that why you're in here? The silver scales under Deathbringer's wings glinted faintly in the torchlight as he shrugged. Perhaps, but it's not a terrible thing to question your orders if you ask me. Flame flicked his tail and fidgeted with one of his wings. What orders? Fatespeaker asked Flame and Starflight. Who is this? Can't one of your visions tell you that? Flame asks nightly. This is Deathbringer, Starflight explained. He was sent to kill my friends, but instead he let us go and he saved glory from the other Nightwings. Three moons, keep your voice down, Deathbringer said, looking nervous for the first time. I think I'm the only dragon down here, apart from the Queen Splendor, but you never know. That's Queen Splendor? Starflight asked. The first Rainwing captured by the tribe, said Deathbringer. She's the one who accidentally scared vengeance. The idea was, once we had their queen, they would do whatever we wanted. Little did we know that not only do they have multiple queens, apparently they can go for months without noticing one is missing either. Yikes, said Fate Speaker. Doesn't surprise me, Flame said. That's all going to change, Starflight said. Glory will make sure of it. Because of Glory, Deathbringer asked. Starflight jumped. Had the other dragon read his mind? They stared at each other for a moment. Yes, Starflight said finally. The look on Deathbringer's face was so obvious, so real and sad. The surfer had the weird experience of being able to see what his own expression must be every time he thought of Sunny. Who's Glory? Fate Speaker asked. That's a long story, Starflight said. I'm going back to bed, Flame growled. A small burst of fire curled out of his snout as he pushed past Fate Speaker. This is pointless. Wait, Deathbringer said. Just remember that you're your own dragon. You don't have to do what you're told. You can at least ask questions. So I can end up like you? Flame snapped. Bind bars and be dumped into a pit of lava? That does sound like great advice. Deathbringer shrugged. A ghost of a smile crossed his face. It could be worse. Like how you, like if you killed any of my friends, Starflight said. That would be worse. Flame snorted again and slithered her way up the tunnel. Starflight watched the flickers of fire around his snout moving through the shadows, past Splendor's cage and back to the stairs. So Glory's all right, Deathbringer said to Starflight. She made it back. Starflight nodded. But she is pretty mad about all the imprisoned rain wings. He hesitated, thinking that he really shouldn't trust this Nightwing, no matter how much he helped them. Of course she is, said Deathbringer with another half-smile. I never thought that was a good idea for the record. The niches for the coals down here were rough, hacked out of the jagged rock walls instead of neatly carved and chiseled like the ones on the upper floors. So the shadows all had sharp edges, like talons trying to claw their way out of the stone. The heat was even worse than the blazing sun in the Kingdom of the Sand, and Starflight's head was starting to ache. You don't... Uh, you don't seem... Fate Speaker started, then trailed off. 
Like a typical assassin? Deathbringer finished for her. Well, a lot of energy went into training me. But then I was sent to the continent and... I guess when you're, the, when you're on your own for a while, you start thinking your own thoughts instead of anyone else's. I'm afraid that makes me quite a disappointment to the Queen. Fatespeaker grabbed the bars. You've met the Queen? He tilted his head at her. No, not face to face, of course. She watches us through screens and speaks through her daughter, Greatness. It's been like that as long as I've been alive, anyway. Starflight's scales prickled. What if the Queen had screens like that all over the fortress? What if she was always watching her tribe without any of them realizing she was there? He looked around uneasily, thinking that the dungeon shadows could easily hide a few holes in the walls. We need to speak to her, Fate Speaker said. How can we find her? I spent all night searching the whole Moose Begotten Fortress and I can't figure out where she might be. You have? Starflight said, surprised. While well, you were sleeping, she said. I told you, I'm wide awake at night. I wanted to get started. I'm the same way, Deathbringer said to her. Listen, it's not safe to seek out the Queen. She wouldn't like it. We don't have to invade her magical privacy or whatever, Fate Speaker said. Does she have a throne room, somewhere we can talk through the wall and probably find her? Deathbringer hesitated. This isn't a good idea. I don't think she'll help you. I think she will, Fate Speaker said. She pressed her front talons to her forehead dramatically. I saw it in a vision. Deathbringer gave her an extremely odd look. Really? My visions are never wrong, Fate Speaker said breezily. Although I wish they would warn me a more useful thing sometimes. She glanced out at her claws, and Starflight guessed she was thinking of Squid. Well, Deathbringer said slowly, If you really want to try the throne room, it's on the far side of the fortress from here, two doors past the library if you're coming from the council chamber. But even if she's behind that screen in the middle of the night, which she won't be, she won't speak to you without greatness there. She doesn't have to speak, Fate Speaker said passionately. She has to listen! Deathbringer met Starflight's eyes and shrugged again. Well, good luck, but hurry, it'll be dawn soon. How can you tell? Starflight asked. There were no windows in the dungeon, nothing to mark the passage of time. Nothing but pockmarked black rocks surrounding the prisoners. I can sense it, said Deathbringer. I spent a few months sleeping out in the open and you'll get a knack for it too. What were you doing on your own on the continent for so long? Starflight asked. I had a list, Deathbringer said, and any regular meetings to receive new orders. Did you ever notice that whenever one side appeared to be winning the war, one of the top generals would mysteriously die? Not that I'm taking credit for anything, of course. I did notice that, Starflight said. At least from what I could figure out from the newest history scrolls. But if that was you, well, it seemed to happen on all three sides, so I thought it had to be a coincidence. Deathbringer spread his wings. We only chose a side recently. He paused. I was not consulted in that choice. You don't like Buster either, Starflight realized. Starflight, we have to go, Fate Speaker said, tugging on his tail. I want to find the Queen tonight, before Morrissey can do anything else awful. Come on! Starflight stepped back reluctantly. He felt as if he still had so many questions for Deathbringer. And this might be the first Nightwing who would actually give him real answers. I'll come back, he promised. Soon, I'll... I'll see what I can do to help you. Don't get into trouble, said Deathbringer. I'll be alright. Good luck. He tipped his wings toward Fate Speaker. Starflight wished he could do something. He should try to save Deathbringer the way the Nightwing had saved Glory, both from assassination and from the prison caves. He should do something brave, something bold and kind and heroic. But he had no idea how to even begin. Instead, he followed Spakey, Fate Speaker back to the fortress, back through the tunnels and hallways, in search of the throne room and the queen who might or might not be there, who might or might not listen, and who almost certainly would not help them.